All right, so what we're gonna do is I want you guys to create um, Google Slides. So if you go to drive.google.com, as you can see, Mr. Adams has already signed in. You're just gonna go to new and you're gonna click uh, Google Slides. And now, um, when you first pop up with a new uh, Google presentation, uh, it's going to ask you what type of theme you want to choose. There's no particular theme that I'm going to choose that I think is more important than the other. So you just choose whatever you feel works best. The next thing is, is over here, this particular one is going to be Chapter 5. We're going to do this on every chapter from here on out. You guys are going to outline. You guys are going to present. Uh, and we will record videos, but you're going to present the notes, but we're going to say chapter five. Actually, let's uh, make sure that we put in geometry chapter five. And then the title is relationships within triangles. Okay. And that is also going to be my title that I'm going to put here. I'm going to put relationships. Well, I should probably put chapter five. Chapter five, relationships within triangles. And we will close this out. And then you will put the people uh, that, you know, I'm going to put Tom Adams because I'm Tom Adams. But you'll put the members of your group there. Now, the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to enter in a slide. And so this is my slide. Now, if you look in your textbook, problem number one has a title, right? So problem number, t uh, it says identifying parallel segments. So it says identifying and you could probably put number one too. So I'm going to type number one, identifying parallel segments. All right. And so now I'm going to create this. Um, I'm going to try to do the best that I can to recreate what we have here in the textbook. So it says in the textbook, what are the three um, pairs of parallel segments in triangle, now this is where it gets tricky. It says triangle, okay? Triangle DEF. Well, now there's a couple of ways I could I could do that. How I can import the triangle. I could put the triangle here. I could also change the text around. I'm just going to use the word triangle, and then I'll show you something else later. Triangle. D, E, F. One of the methods that you could use is you could put in the delta or a special character. So for example, if I go insert special character, Um, delta is a Greek letter, um, but it can also be under the number. But if you look under symbol, I'm just going to type in the word delta here under the search. You could do triangle too. I want to do triangle because that's a little more accurate. Delta looks a little different than the triangle. So I'm just going to use this triangle. Now I clicked on it and if you notice, it put it in there. See how I did that? Yeah. So I've got my triangle DEF and maybe I'll put a space there. All right, so my triangle DEF, question mark. Then it, and then it says RS, but the RS has a line over the top of it. 
and um, that's something that that'll be a little different but we'll say rs comma st and tr are the mid segments of and then it's asking for triangle def again of the triangle def so i just copied and pasted that real quick by the triangle mid segment theorem rs now we're going to have to do some special characters too because i need the parallel sign so i'm going to say special character pulls up my menu and I'm going to put parallel. See these these are the two little lines. Yep. I'm going to put a bunch of them cuz I need to make a bunch of statements. So so RS is parallel to DF And ST is parallel to ED. And TR is parallel to FE. Okay. And I, I don't know, maybe you can make these a little bigger if you wanted to. So it's a little more apparent. Another way you could do this, if you didn't like that symbol on your keyboard, there's actually a straight up line that you could do that might be a little better. That one is a little better. What was it? Something D? E D. Those are a little better. Um, T R. And space it so it looks nice. Now I'm taking the time to show you guys this and I'm gonna give you plenty of time to do this. And so this is the explanation, but now I need the image. So if you look in your textbook, it has this complicated image, which has got a triangle. So now I can draw that triangle. So I'm gonna do my best. So if I click here, I got, I've got i got shapes and that kind of looks like a scaling triangle, okay? And I want to find a triangle that's kind of a scaling. That's the closest thing. So now I'm going to draw like this triangle. But I'm going to try and make it look like... I want to try and make it look like the one in the book. So see how I'm clicking on that right there? And now I'll make it bigger. See how I'm doing this? Mm -hmm. See how it looks almost the same? Now I'm gonna make it just like the book. So if I come over here, the fill color is probably gonna be white, right? Or we can make it transparent. And then my pen color is actually, in the textbook, it's black. And then I can make the line thicker by doing this, okay? And that's that triangle. Now, if I take this triangle and I come over to edit, I can duplicate it. And you say, well, Mr. Adams, why would you duplicate it? Well, remember the theorem says that if we find the midpoints, it makes a triangle that's about half the size as the other one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make stretch this till it's about half the size of the other one. And then I'm gonna rotate it around because it'll fit in between. See how that works? And then I'm just gonna make it fit in there Boom. Got to make it a little smaller. All right? Yes. Do we have to make the color stay also? Yeah, we're going to we you have to label everything. So now notice that when I drew this triangle, see how it's a little bit too big? Yeah. So now what I need to do is I'm going to select both triangles. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to try my best to select both triangles and It's part of my text thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my text thing out of the way for a second. 
I gotta click outside of it. I'm gonna move my text thing away. Just off to the side. And I'm going to select this triangle now. And I'm gonna make the whole thing just a little smaller. And I'm gonna put it over here up to the right a little bit. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move this back, but I'm gonna change it a little bit so it fits like this, okay? And then I'm gonna label the A, B, and we gotta do the little hash marks. Now the hash marks, you could do just a line and you could just do like one of them. You could just go like this. I'm gonna make one line and I'm gonna make it red and I'm gonna make it three. And then now if I take, it's control D, but if I hit duplicate, it will duplicate it. So if I hit control D, control D, I have all these little marks and you're just gonna place those wherever you need to. Right, so that this is showing that those are congruent. And then I'm gonna take this one over here and rotate it around. Okay, and then I need to, so from there I'm gonna duplicate one, two. And you could, you could even do some other things too that's kind of cool, like you can duplicate these things, but it'll take you a little bit of time and you'll get it done. Um, I'm gonna duplicate that, that goes in here. I'm gonna duplicate that, I'm gonna put that over here. I'm gonna duplicate that, that goes in there. And this one is gonna go here. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Slide that down here, slide this down here, and slide this down here. And for the, for the time's sake, basically try to make that look as nice and as neat as you can. Another option you could do, and it's really up to you, you could also do this. Triangle, mid, segment, theorem. And when you Google search it, go to images. See what you have here. And you might find an image that looks just the way that you want. So you might find an image like this. You might find an image like this. But drawing it's probably better. Here's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. So let's say I don't want to go through all the hassle of doing all that drawing. I could do this and copy the image and come right back here. I'll have to change my letters around, right? If I copy the image and then I paste it, in other words, I might say paste, and I have to change my, my letters around so the letters will fit. Does that make sense? But it's really up to you. Now here's the last thing that I wanna share with you guys so you kinda of get an idea. Once you've finished everything, when you're in presentation mode, on my smart board, when you guys go to present, and keep this in mind as you're making your slide, you can take one of these markers, which really isn't a marker at all, and you can write right on the presentation, okay? So it might be in your best interest what Mr. Adams loves to do when he's teaching is sometimes you might want to draw the image or have the image there and label it. In other words, you might want to say, well, I know that these sides are congruent and then just draw your hash marks. And then as you're teaching, you're going to say triangle DEF. Well, that this is D, this is E, and this is F. Okay, does that make sense? So as you're creating your PowerPoint presentation, know that you're going to have the ability to draw in there and think about, because you may not want to label everything. And then think about what it's like for a student, because we're going to do this two or three times. Um, 
If I have everything up here and I just stand and I just explain, uh, what are the three pairs of parallel segments in uh, triangle DEF? Uh, RST and ST and, and TR are the mid segments of DEF by the triangle mid there, blah, 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 blah. RS is parallel, blah, and I just read it off. The person sitting in the chair, the students, might not understand what all that means. So you want to think, how am I going to teach this? Maybe, maybe you don't type all this, or maybe you make that animated, right? Maybe you animate the slide so that you ask the question, and this isn't on the slide at first. Maybe you don't label all the parts, right? Maybe you want to say, well, because I think in the book, what is it, R-S-T? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so R-S-T. So maybe as you're teaching it, you go R-S, the line segment R-S, from here to here. I see what I'm doing when I do that? I'm drawing everybody's attention to what R-S is. And S-T. But now sometimes you could even be more creative. You could, instead of doing blue, you could grab a different color. And S-T. Right? See how I do that? And so, and then maybe, uh, and then TR. Okay? And so that's what I want you guys to think about, how you're teaching it, how people see it, how they perceive it. Right. All right. Yeah. Work on it separate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the rest of the class period. Make sure that you share this Google slide with Mr. Adams. And I'm going to be looking for my computer and see what you guys are doing, maybe offer some feedback.